and this is more of Recore, and of course it's Tata's Tuesday for Recore. And this means I'm going to talk about Jewel as the female playable character. And specifically, Jewel is a female playable character that, like the rebooted Lara Croft, is her father's daughter. And this is a trope in video games that has irritated me for reasons I haven't been able to figure out. It's like, everybody is somebody's daughter. Why should this bother me? And I realized that it's not the focus on the father-daughter relationship. It's that it's the way it's done. And I finally figured out what element about it drove me crazy. It's that they've just replaced the female fantasy normally through, you know, a really sexy lady with the daughter every nerd guy of the age to have a kid wants. They're perfected in ways that are difficult to explain in a short video, but they're extensions of their fathers instead of characters in and of themselves. They don't have enough of a personality in and of themselves to really have any flaws, to really make mistakes in sort of a moral way. I mean, they're, they're definitely not sexualized. No, and isn't that what every father wants for their daughter? Them to like not exist in any sort of sexual way that they know about. You know, they're always sort of athletic and kind of technical in the same way and smart you know pretty but not too sexy because that kind of freaks them out because they know what guys are like at that age all that stuff what they aren't is an autonomous human being with their own wishes they're spending the whole game executing the remains of their father's goals and through the whole game, this is what I finally realized playing this, and I don't know if it's a whole game here yet, but certainly in the Tomb Raider games, you find out a lot more about the dad's aspirations than the daughter's. And this defeats the purpose of a female playable character. The playable character in a third-person game is not just your arms and legs within the game. It's supposed to be your window into the game. Instead of it being you, which is what the first person camera is traditionally designed to simulate you in some armor or something, or you, you know, looking through eyes. Because when you're normally moving around, you don't see your own back, you know. And see, here, look who's doing the narration. This character is her father. So why are we seeing this through his voice? And why are we learning about this through his voice? Where is she? She's practically silent, except in cutscenes, and that's normally reserved for a first-person protagonist. And I'm sitting here going, in short, to make this really clear, instead of it being a game that, yes, the, the playable character is your arms and legs, that happens no matter what, but you're also supposed to connect with them through their emotions, through their heart, and through their soul. And in games like this, in games in the way that the Tomb Raider reboots were structured, yes, we get Lara and we get Jewel physically, but we don't get them as much in terms of that core character stuff as in what they're really passionate about, what they really care about, other than their dad and this I realized yes this is it. it it has nothing to do with the father-daughter relationship because compare this with something like the last of us right the last of us would ex was exactly what it purported to be in in the base game Joel was really the his his needs and his pain were really what drove the emotional elements of the plot you saw that stuff that happened with his biological daughter and then he meets ellie and it's the whole feels right it didn't try to trick you by showing you and having you control the body of the young woman but feel what the older man feels 
it was like, yeah, this is primarily Joel. And then in the expansion, they got beyond that and you learned more about Ellie. And that's not to say there was nothing of Ellie in the original game. There just wasn't this disconnect between the perspective you were experiencing the game physically through and the perspective you were experiencing the game emotionally through. And that's the difference. And there's, there's ways of doing it. Because, I mean, heck, there have been a lot of, you know, the, the Baldur's Gate games were basically a character, and it could be a man or a woman, affected by their father's legacy. It was the exact same structure. But it wasn't told from the emotional point of view of Baal the God of Murder. That would be a hilarious game, but, you know, that wasn't it. And if you stand on these too long, you get electrocuted. So that's, that's what it was. And I'm really glad I identified this because now that we've identified what the disconnect is in this thing, we can start to fix it. And why is it a disconnect? Why does it matter? Because it's a writing cheat. And I realized that's the irritation instead of just recognizing it and going, oh, okay. As a writer, I'm like, that's a cheat. That's a cheat. You're afraid to write a game from the point of view of a young girl. So you cheat it and you have her there physically and you have her saying things and you have her do all these cool things and building things and playing with robots, fine. You get to play in that sandbox. But when you have to write an emotional moment, you rely on the crutch of you still get to tell it from the perspective of an older dude. So the writers of these games are, and who, you know, and not just the writers, I shouldn't say that, my bad. The creative developers of these games, because the writing too often comes last, that's another big difference between Naughty Dog games and everything else, is the writing is an integral part of the creative process in a Naughty Dog game. The writing comes after all the plots and levels and everything like that are are figured out and you wonder well how can you write that if everything's established for you yes exactly and so you know you get these things and and they don't necessarily work and so the real storytelling comes through the gameplay which yes it absolutely should be but you've got these you know predominantly male teams who and again i won't say they don't know how to write women because i know a lot of you know male creatives who do great jobs with women you know and there's because a lot of women can write great male characters too as long as you think of them as a character as a character and you self-define them you're fine because there's there's nothing you know we we overstate how much gender has an impact on a person's character in a, in a game like this we don't know that Jewel would be a teenager in the way a teenager in our world would be. We don't know what her experiences are. And again, that's why Ellie worked. We learned about what that particular teenage girl was like because she was born after the zombie apocalypse. And, you know, that was very critical. They understand character and how character and narrative interplay. In these games, they're just dodging it. They're not even making the attempt and, you know, again, even if they hire a female writer, if that writing isn't developed from the get-go in a game, and there was some environment clipping right there, you'll notice, um, the, it falls flat. The whole purpose of having that female lead, you missed the point, because it's not her story emotionally. And that's the uh, thing. So I feel so much better that I figured that out. <laughs> and before you get mad at me, before you get mad at me, I'm not saying it's a bad thing that a game is told from the point of view of an older guy. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the selling point of these female protagonists politically is to get a female perspective in these games. And they're cheating it. It's not actually happening because they're not actually telling the story, oh no, radiation, from the point of view of the young woman. And, and does every woman in a science fiction property now have to look like this? I mean, we've got Lara Croft, Rey from Star Wars, Katniss from The Hunger Games, Jewel from ReCore. I mean, this 
is very much a Tomb Raider game. You'll, you'll notice. It is very much Cyberpunk Tomb Raider. So, if you like Tomb Raider games, you'll probably very much like this. But in terms of gameplay, it, it is, you know, it's, it's the sweet spot in terms of innovation because it tweaks things ever so slightly. It does things differently, but it's not at all a new kind of game. And I think that was a marketing mistake that they didn't basically go, guess what, it's Tomb Raider with robots, because that's cool. But then you start seeing the uncanny similarities between Jewel and New Lara. And that was, that was what, what clinched this whole thing that I'm doing. Like, it's not... Again, it's not that I have a problem with, with male characters. God, no. I mean, I love Kratos. And I love Joel. In The Last of Us, Joel, Jewel, hey. No kidding. Jewel is a unit of energy. But it's, it's not that. And it's not there's anything wrong with telling a story between a guy and his daughter. I think those could be incredibly poignant stories. But we lose the complexity of the daughter part through these relative ciphers who are just doing their father's bidding. And the reason this bothers me is that these developers are, it's, it's a misdirect. It's selling a game based on a quality it, it, that is really just a coat of paint. It's not the guts of the thing. It's just a gloss they put on it to give the same emotional perspective Instead of really giving us something new, and you're saying, you know, oh, before you said we're not that different, now you're saying it's something new. What I mean by that is the attempt to tell a story from the perspective of a character we recognize as female and struggling with what that means. And an audio log is about to run here. And so I'm going to wrap up here because talking over this is really going to suck. So... Hope you enjoyed this little bit of ReCore and my Tata's Tuesday version of this. Tomorrow, hopefully, I will talk more about the pros and cons of the gameplay. Okay, thanks, guys.